This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access VPN. When you use the internet to stream or just browse, Private Internet Access will help you block malware and trackers while unblocking content. Sign up today using the link below. What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Look, this year isn't over, but I'm already getting juiced for 2021 after the latest rumors drop for what we could see with next year's M1X chip, new MacBooks, the iPad Pro, and Apple Watch. So lots of things thrown out there right now. Let's get right to it. And according to Leaks Apple Pro, who has been a reliable source, he claims the next version of the M1 chip, currently called the M1X, will have 12 cores total. That is eight performance cores and four high efficiency cores compared to the four and four in the current M1 lineup. You already know what the M1 is doing, so you are getting four more performance cores in this new processor. The tweet claims it will be coming first to the 16-inch MacBook Pro lineup and will be unveiled as a press release and not part of an event. The name of the chip isn't final, and the tweet references a source saying, if you think the M1 is fast, you haven't seen the M1X. Uh, did I just pee myself again? Because if this is real, the M1X is going to be a monster and it makes sense since it would be for the higher tier 16 inch machine, but pushing it out as a press release, that doesn't seem like something they would do, especially if it's the first M1X. This is really an opportunity for them to showcase it at an Apple event. Now, according to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, we can expect to see Apple release additional M1 MacBooks in the second half of 2021. Kuo says these new MacBooks will feature an all new design and he's not being specific, but we can kind of put the pieces together that he's referencing the rumored 14 inch and then new 16 inch MacBook Pros. There has still been no confirmation if we can expect to see the long rumored mini LED displays or even 5G in the next generation MacBook Pros, but that's been out there in the rumor mills. Now, one feature that I've personally never been a big fan of has been the touch bar. That's no surprise. It just doesn't enhance the way I use my machine. But according to a recently revealed patent application from Patently Apple, force touch sensors could be added to a future MacBook Pro touch bar. As of now, Force Touch or even 3D Touch has been removed from every single Apple product, so this would be a surprise. One of my requests for the touch bar has always been to add some sort of haptic feedback on it because right now anything is better than what it is. Now, Force Touch allowed you to add extra pressure on a display with your finger, and it would trigger a haptic feedback and offer additional options depending on the context of what was being pressed on. Apple never stuck with it and pretty much abandoned the tech after it never caught on to the general public, like many of you on the iPhone and the Apple Watch. Now, the newly revealed patent suggests that Force Touch could have an expanded role in the Mac, and if they're keeping the touch bar, I need to see it do more than what it does today. So, you know, maybe it finds a new home with the touch bar and with the M1's exceptional performance and power consumption, bringing us new features like this wouldn't hurt its battery as much as it might have in the past. We have the Apple Watch, which is a device that I've used Force Touch on all the time, but not anymore after they completely removed the feature in WatchOS 7, even if your Apple Watch still has the hardware to support it. And you know that I was really thrilled about that. Now, according to Quo, the 2021 Apple Watch will also get a redesign and increase the screen size of both the 44 and 40 millimeter Apple Watch sizes. He doesn't say what the new sizes will be, but he doesn't say which models will be affected because look, right now we have the SE and the Series 6 lineup. To me, it makes more sense for the Series 7 to get this new rumored redesign and then Apple can keep the Series 6 and the SE at an even lower price point next year because you know Apple is in the business now of having like three or four models per year that that's really the new normal now the ipad pro is also set to have a big 2021 after the 2020 model it added a ultra wide camera a lidar sensor while getting the same exact processor with one more enabled gpu core now i kept my 2018 ipad pro and i didn't upgrade to the 2020 version because there's just nothing compelling about it for me but that could change next year we've heard the rumors for a while but korean website the elec claims that at least one ipad pro model will come with a mini LED display in the first half of 2021. But then the report gets even more interesting because it says that Apple plans on releasing new iPad Pro models featuring OLED displays in the second half of 2021. They say Samsung and LG already are working on developing the OLED displays, according to the report. That doesn't sound like it makes sense unless they're working on an even higher tier tablet, which again, doesn't make sense. Even display analyst Ross Young, who has been covering the Apple supply chain for a while, shut down the idea of OLED displays on Apple's iPads with a clear nope. So 
The long-standing rumor up to this point has been that we'll get a new 12.9 inch iPad Pro with a mini LED display with the possibility that we could also see an 11 inch iPad Pro with mini LED as well. But that's not all we could see from the 2021 iPad Pros. Digitimes reports Apple has been able to successfully develop its own in-house millimeter wave antenna in package for next year's iPhone lineup. That means there's a greater chance that we could see that antenna and 5G connectivity coming to the iPad Pros as well. And I always bring this up as a refresher, but there are two flavors of 5G. Sub six gigahertz is one of them, and it's wider spread, covers larger distances, and typically serves more suburban and rural areas, but its speed tends to be slower than millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is placed in denser, more urban areas like cities. The signal covers shorter distances, but has ultra fast speeds if you're nearby a tower. So these two flavors of 5G work together, and then 4G LTE fills in the rest of the gaps for connectivity. Now I used to buy the cellular version of the iPad and it was useful, but Wi-Fi is around me so much, especially for us now that we're staying in place more. And I didn't use the feature that much even before the pandemic, but if this is your primary device, it can still be super handy. Also, a lot of you are still having fun with iOS 14. I recently made a video showing you how to get access to the all new Apple Pro Raw feature for photography right now with the iOS 14.3 developer beta. Well, a new report from Israeli site, The Verifier, claims Apple will drop support for the iPhone SE, iPhone 6S, and iPhone 6S Plus in the new iOS 15. This is also an outlet that said we would see Touch ID in the Apple Watch Series 6 crown. That was a reach and it never happened. This claim seems a little more realistic and that would mean iOS 15 would support the iPhone SE 2020 edition, the iPod Touch 7 generation, and then iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and higher. But there are still a lot of people using a 6S and that phone is working just fine for them. But also there's still no iPhone 9 because 7, 8, 9. Yeah, yeah, you like that? No? Okay, well, feel free to subscribe anyways. All right, thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. If you use the internet, then you need Private Internet Access. Whether you use it to stream, torrent, or just browse, a VPN subscription from Private Internet Access will hide your IP address and location, block ads, malware, and trackers, and it will even unblock geo-restricted content so you can stream your favorite shows wherever you are in the world. It's a must have for my devices and trust me, I have a lot, but fortunately, private internet access lets you connect up to 10 devices at the same time and has apps available for Mac, iOS, Linux, Android, and Windows. Best of all, it's backed by a 30 day money back guarantee and they offer 24 seven technical support just in case you ever need it. They're also one of the only VPN services with a no logging policy that has been verified in court. So you can rest easy knowing that they've got your back. Private internet access is unleashing their best ever deal for the rest of 2020, $79 for three whole years, plus an additional two months free for the best no log VPN available. Stay safe and remember to always use protection. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get my latest videos when they drop. Also, check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories, new ones, and special guests. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love.